very very important and i want all of you to remember and read it with me it is never too late for a new beginning in your life it is never too late for a new beginning in your life and i am sure you know this answers your question that many of you have asked ke sir i started late many of you have become eligible recently with the uh, neat pg eligibility and now you are thinking is it too late it is never too late you have to stop thinking about the past and stop worrying about the outcome focus on present and you will be able to do it okay so go onwards it is not too late i know of students who started like 5 years later 6 years later after mbbs i know of ladies who started even after starting family and then they started preparing and i know many of them are doing very very well so it's never too late it is about today if you want to real do it go ahead and make it happen today okay okay let's start with the first question first question let's see how many of you are able to answer my first question i want all of you to put the chat box on fire and let me know the answers what you have marked so that i can help you to correct the question is 65 year old male hemiparesis and aphasia bp is high sugar is normal ncct is normal so you are suspecting stroke in a patient with stroke if the ct is normal what is ruled out you have ruled out hemorrhage you have ruled out hemorrhage now very very important question and i want you to know this has been asked in a ini ct exam in the past stroke is a very important topic as far as your neat pg is concerned as well as your ini ct is concerned so rule out hemorrhage that means we are dealing with infarct that means we are dealing with infarct well done i think gitanjali and sushmita priyadarshini all of you are on the right track so if the infarct is ruled out then the next step is to do a ct angiogram to look for a large vessel occlusion i know some of you have might might have marked mri so i will explain to you the diagnostic algorithm everybody now look at the screen now question number 1 if you have a patient with stroke if you have a patient with stroke okay uh, everybody snorlax also better listen to me if you have a patient with stroke the first investigation to be done is nccd this is a potential mcq which can be asked in your neat pg exam also if you have a patient with stroke first thing to be done is a nccd to rule out hemorrhage if the ct does not show hemorrhage we do this is the question that i have asked we will do a ct angiogram if the ct angiogram shows a proximal occlusion if the ct angiogram shows a proximal occlusion that is the place where you will do a diffusion weighted mri so i am putting number 1 here number 2 here number 3 here okay everybody now suppose you you know you want to remember these things so i am zooming in so that you are clear first step if they ask nccd if nccd is normal ct angiogram if ct angiogram shows a proximal occlusion diffusion weighted mri if diffusion weighted mri shows infarct volume less than 70 cc okay if diffusion weighted mri shows infarct volume less than 70 cc you will go for intra arterial thrombolytic therapy if it is more than 70 cc you will do mr perfusion study now i'll explain to you if there is a mismatch between diffusion weighted mri and perfusion study what does this mean okay everybody now please answer in the chat box if there is a mismatch that means diffusion mri shows infarct suppose it infarct is small but the ischemia is large there is a mismatch between the findings on perfusion mri and diffusion mri what do you suspect 
then we suspect that this patient has a penumbra or salvageable zone or area at risk. This is again a potential MCQ for your NEET PG exam. So these are the candidates who would need thrombolysis. Now I'm again repeating Ishita, Abhishek, Femya, Su Su Sudhakar, well done. I'm so happy with you. Now please answer again. I think Snorlax also. Snorlax, I hope this is your correct name. So just let me know. I always like to address you with your name. So please write with your correct name in the chat box. Okay. First step, NCCT. If the hemorrhage is ruled out, CT angiogram. If there is a proximal vessel occlusion, diffusion weighted MRI. If the infarct is less than 70 cc, directly go for intra-arterial thrombolytic therapy. More than 70 cc, go for MR perfusion study. If there is a diffusion perfusion mismatch telling you that there is a penumbra, go for thrombolysis. Okay, clear everybody? Okay, Rashmi, well done. Okay. Now I want you both, all of you to look at an image, potential question for need PG and I want you to put the chat box on fire and let me know, identify the images shown to you and the diagnosis, identify the images shown to you and the diagnosis, the images are, tell me, yes, diffusion weighted MRI and the second image is, ADC map. What is ADC? ADC is apparent diffusion coefficient map. ADC is apparent diffusion coefficient map. Okay. Now, Mahadev, uh, this is not T2 weighted image. This is a image that we use in stroke ADC. Now, DWI is asked multiple times in NEET PG. ADC, they have never asked. Now, everybody listen to me. In fact, on diffusion weighted MRI appears hyper intense. In fact, on ADC image, which is apparent diffusion coefficient, appears hypo intense. Okay, side by side, I'm writing a one-liner. Brain infarct is earliest seen on diffusion weighted MRI. How early? 3 to 30 minutes of onset. How early? 3 to 30 minutes of onset. Okay, I'm repeating everybody. Listen to me now. Just relax. Infarct. On diffusion weighted MRI is hyper intense, it is bright. On ADC image, I in fact will be dark. Now, I know one of the bachas will say, Sir, how will we know this is T2 weighted or ADC? ADC image will never be shown alone, it will be shown with a diffusion image. And when you see an image like this, you can say one is. Diffusion weighted MRI, second is ADC image, apparent diffusion coefficient image, apparent diffusion coefficient image. Okay, everybody, clear? Okay, second question now, coming your way. I am showing you a NCCT. What is the problem? Where is the problem located and what is the cause of the problem? Okay, everybody, anybody now, can you tell me what is the problem on this NCCT and what is the cause of it? We can see a problem in the putamen. What is there? Bleed in the putamen. And what is the most important reason for having bleed in putamen or basal ganglia? The answer is hypertension. Okay, this is a CT scan showing you hypertensive bleed. However, in the question that I have given you, the CT was normal. So, we were thinking in terms of ischemic stroke. If the CT has hemorrhage, this is how it would look like. Just to help you, this is caudate nucleus, thalamus, putamen. Okay, 
so there is a bleed in the putamen this is probably a patient who has hypertension okay so i can already see you are all rocking the show and you will all rock the neat pg exam also and i'll be taking your interview after the exam so please keep rocking okay now another thing i wanted to say to you before we move on is detach yourself from the outcome whenever we start thinking too much about the outcome it puts us under tremendous stress and when we are only thinking about the outcome the stress is so overwhelming that we are not able to win the game i'll explain to you i'll explain to you okay okay uh, i'll take your question fema fema also that whenever i also keep if i keep thinking about what will happen if you know i do this or not then i can't work because there's so much pressure but if i start enjoying my work outcome becomes automatic okay now my answer to fema judy is fema if the infarct is less than 70 cc and there is a large vessel block that means the infarct is still evolving then you go for uh, you know directly go for thrombolytic therapy but if the infarct is more than 70 cc we do not know if the infarct is fully evolved or not we need to do mr perfusion study to see if there is penumbra or not okay okay clear fema 